Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Planet 46 Comic Show. I'm Matt Price. I'm here with Kyle Roberts. Kyle, what do we got going on this week? We've got some Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man 3 news. Chris Cooper is in Amazing Spider-Man 2 and a death of a bat character. All that more this week on the Planet 46 Comic Show. Yeah, we've got a pretty awesome new Iron Man 3 poster. This thing, like when I first saw it, like it's, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Pretty cool. Yahoo Movies shared the newest Iron Man 3 poster. It features Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man. And that film is set for May 3rd release. In the film, Tony Stark faces off against the Mandarin, played by Ben Kingsley, and Shane Black is set to direct. It could be the final appearance for Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, as MSN reports that Downey's contract with Marvel ends after Iron Man 3. Many people think Downey is going to come back for Avengers 2 and possibly beyond, but in an interview with the Empire, Downey seemed to be keeping his options open. He indicated he's interested in coming back, but doesn't want to overstay his welcome. Yeah, and I, mean, I think it's safe to say, like, our RDJ, yeah. Robert Downey Jr., yeah. is, is Iron Man. He is Tony Stark. Like, yeah. He is by far and would be the best possible Iron Man. So that kind of leads us to our question today, you know, should Robert Downey Jr. re-sign as Iron Man? Would you guys like to see him you know, continue to be Tony Stark? Or should somebody else take on the role? I know uh, Kevin Feige said earlier, hey, if at some point he doesn't want to do it, we'd probably recast. But what do you think? Would would you be interested in Iron Man without Robert Downey Jr.? Would that be interested in the Avengers without him? Or should are you only interested while he's in the role? Yeah. Let okay. us know. Let us know what you think. Cool. And then topic two, Chris Cooper. Gonna be an Amazing Spider-Man number two. Yeah, lots of news coming out from that movie lately. We got a first look at the Amazing Spider-Man costume recently from ComingSoon.net, and then The Hollywood Reporter and others now report Chris Cooper's been cast in the film as Norman Osborn. Um, in the comics and in previous films, of course, Norman Osborn is the father of Peter Parker's friend Harry Osborn. Man, spoiler if you haven't ever read a comic or seen a movie everybody <laughs> saw, he eventually becomes the villain of Screen Goblin. Now, whether that would happen in this film or in a future sequel, we don't know that right now. Um, the Mark Webb directed Amazing Spider-Man 2 is set for a May 2, 2014 release. In addition to Cooper, the film will star Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Jamie Foxx, Dane DeHaan, and Shailene Woodley. I kind of think he won't be Green Goblin until a later movie because right. they got so many villains so already in there. Already going on. But he's a very he's got a lot of gravitas, so he will be a good choice, I think. And I think that kind of leads to maybe he was the one that's at the end of Amazing Spider-Man right now. Could Norman be. Osborn. Yeah, that character we know. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. And topic three, a new superhero novel. Yeah, this is uh, Tom Andrews' latest superhero novel, a friend of the show. Uh, Bob Moore, Hostile Territory, is available now as an e-book. This is the third in the series about Private Eye Bob Moore, a regular guy who investigates crime in a world full of superpowered beings. In Hostile Territory, Bob is invited to become the U new U.S. ambassador to Super City after the previous two dignitaries have disappeared. It's hoped that Bob can ferret out the truth and behind the disturbances, but a pair of grisly killings implicates one of Bob's only allies. So now trapped in a city of supers that want him dead, Bob must determine who, if anyone, is worth saving. So that's uh, Hostile Territory. Look for an interview with author Tom Andry coming up in Weekend Look and at blog.newsok.com slash nerdage. Let's get into the review file. First up, Batman Incorporated, number eight, part of the New 52. Yeah, Grant Morrison, Chris Burnham. Spoilers are ahead in this review, which has been one of the most talked about recent DC comics that so you've probably heard. But uh, in Batman Incorporated, number eight, Batman's sidekick and son, Damien, a.k.a. Robin, is killed off by the forces of Leviathan. In a story that's been called the culmination, at least thematically, of Grant Morrison's Batman tale that stretches across six years and multiple books, Batman Incorporated delivered a gut punch of a story that will have reverberations across the Batman line of comics. Um, Morrison continues to explore the theme of damaged families, and this ad is sad and poignant. I especially like the final scene between Nightwing and Robin as they acknowledge their time as the Batman and Robin duo. Sweet, and the next up, Guardians of the Galaxy, point one. Yeah, both writer Brian Michael Bendis and artist Steve McNiven have done big action-packed events for Marvel. Bendis with Secret Invasion, McNiven with Civil War. Teaming up together here for the prelude issue of the new Guardians of the Galaxy series, the pair do a good job bringing heft and importance to the origin of Star-Lord, the character at the center of the new Guardians of the Galaxy comic book. Peter Quill is the son of an Earth mother and an alien father. His father is part of the royal family of Spartax, and his royal lineage puts Peter Quill in danger when aliens attempting to eliminate Spartax's line find Earth. It's a great looking debut issue from McNiven, and Bendis gets readers invested in the story of young Peter Quill before his adventures as Star-Lord get going full throttle in the upcoming issue number one. There are some questions that longtime readers may have about things that changed since Star-Lord's last appearance. 
I don't know if they're gonna answer those or not going forward, but those coming in willing to give this thing a try as a fresh start, I think you're gonna like it. Kind of kicking off a uh, new cosmic space era for Marvel with that and Nova, which we talked about recently. Sweet, and then finally, Young Avengers, number two. Yeah, this is uh, Gill and McKelvey Norton are kind of your creative team. In the last issue, Wiccan tried to return Hulkling's parents from the dead, but instead he got some creepy monsters that everyone thinks are Hulkling's parents. The pair try to get help from the Avengers without success because the Avengers are also in the thrall of the monster spell. Only kid Loki seems able to help and neither Hulkling or Wiccan are completely sold on what type of help Loki might give them. Artists Jamie McKelvey and Mike Norton with colorist Matthew Wilson give this comic his very own look that pops off the stands. And Kieran Gillen's providing a fresh new take on the successes and mistakes of young heroes in what's one of the best Marvel Now books coming out. Sweet. Uh, what's your pick of the three? Uh, let's say Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a fun, fun launch. Get you in. Uh, who doesn't want to go to space? <laughs> let's go to space. Guardians of the Galaxy point one will be my pick of the week. Let's go ahead and go. All right. Sweet. All right. Hey, come back next week for more comic book and movie news. For Kyle Roberts, I'm Matt Price. Thanks for watching.